Alright, what's going on people? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Aiden, and today we're watching Black Sails, Season 1, Episode 4. Last episode, we managed to see the plan play out a little more. Silver has wormed his way onto the ship in hopes of getting some of that treasure from the 5 million Spanish dollar galley. Galleon. Galleon? I keep getting the two mixed up. I mean, his play of trying to remember the information from that captain's log and then destroying the evidence, making him incredibly valuable for Captain Flint and Eleanor. See, I think the big question is whether they can, or whether John can keep this up. At some point, I feel like as soon as the information has been given, there's no way they're going to allow him to live, right? He knows that. He knows what's going to happen the second that information is given, and they find that that uh, reward. So he's probably going to have to play the game a bit. I mean, initially, when he was going around looking for people who were against Captain Flint, you know, the mutiny, or what was left of the mutiny, I thought he was doing that as a way of protecting himself, perhaps the build, building hatred towards the captain, or taking them a part of, as a part of his own uh, ship, and then they can go after the rewards. But no, no, he used the opportunity to garner a favour with, was it Billy? help boost the morale of the crew. And then we had the deal with Captain Vane and his crew. Vane ended up helping out Eleanor at the one point to gain access to was it was another merchant ship, right? Or was it his guns? I'm not too sure. But he helped out with that and Eleanor repaid the favour, you know, showed up as his residence and jumped straight on him, just missing the fact that her lovey-dovey partner, Max, was just chained up well, that morning beforehand. After they had done their business, they heard the commotions outside where Max was being raped by the crew. Eleanor got involved and completely destroyed Captain Vane. Dismantled this crew. He he's never working with Eleanor again or on that island again. So I see half of that crew decided to jump ship, so to speak. And I guess they're going to be they're gonna, well, oh yeah, because they were hired to actually work on the second ship, right, to help with the siege. So that's that's definitely, it's not going to play out well, is it? There's no way Vayne is going to go out like that. He's going to find his way. Maybe he gets his own, he gets another ship, and goes after it himself with a smaller crew. Before we get started with this episode, if you want to watch the full-length reaction to this episode of Black Sails or any of the other shows and movies that I watch then you can find the link to my Patreon in the description below. Also in the comments section let me know how you're finding the series so far. If I've missed anything so far let me know I guess and if there's anything else you'd like to see me react to. I'm planning on starting to look at anime soon. I've never watched it before and I want to give it a go. Add someone in the comment section of one of my Shadow and Bone episodes saying I should react to Hunter x Hunter, but I'm also hearing online that it's probably not the best one to start with as a first ever anime to watch. Maybe it can ruin your experience with other animes, I'm not sure. But yeah, let me know. Let's get into this.
Yeah, so I wonder what this episode is going to be about then. I'm guessing it's going to be mostly gathering of the second ship, right? Putting that team together and kind of uh, updating them on the mission. Captain Gates. Hey, I mean, dude's making making moves in the world, right? Going to get his own chance to be a captain. You will need somebody to act as your quartermaster in the meantime. Unless anybody's got any better ideas. I was thinking Billy Bow. Okay, so they seem to like Billy then. He's a favourite of the ship. So it makes sense. Oh, okay. Now, to return to the issue of location. What about the fuck tent? That's probably something we can... I mean, you've got to have your fuck tent. Question is, how big is the fuck tent? One man at a time? Or is it kind of a, a group effort? I don't know. Now, Mr. DeGroote's concerns are valid. But they come at a price. Five million dollars in Spanish gold, to be exact. So that's a fucking massive number. They're all listening. Every single man on this ship will be made into royalty. Like he said, you know, they're all princes after this. Given the potential for distraction and delay at a time that we need to be at our best, perhaps we can all agree to forego, you know, just this once, a fuck tent. They're not going to be <laughs> happy about that. It's the only reason they want to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Here it is, the tent. <laughs> no negotiations when it comes to the fuck tent. But days later, we come ashore. I see a lady waiting for Flint. Two words escape his lips. Hunting the Maria, Elaine, was never about money. It was an execution. It's a hit job against the two rich guys, or rich couple at least. Because his partner wanted it. Yeah, so he, he didn't actually care about the safety of his crew, or them actually making actual wealth from the job. Yes, who's to say this shit that he's sold the dream to everyone is actually what we think it is. Here it is. What we've all been waiting for. He's not exactly enjoying himself, is he? <laughs> Honestly, I can't tell if she's enjoying it either. It's not the face I saw and is enjoying it. So he looks dead inside. As he was graduated to opium. Smoking his sorrows away with opium, right? <laughs> Hello, uh, Tommy Shelby. He's also doing opium as well, weren't he? Look, I have never seen any more than three men paying him any attention. This business with Vane has changed things. Get control of her, Mr. Scott, before it's too late. I mean, that's a difficult part, right? She's very emotional about everything. Rightfully so, of course, you know. Fucking raping woman she likes. There's another example that Fane cannot keep control of his crew. Eleanor, if you make a move against Captain Bryce Lenore's ship, you'll be making a move against the Guthrie Trading Company, a direct affront to your grandfather. I never ask anything of you. This I must insist on. Tell me you understand. She doesn't understand. Bullshit. I mean, a good man at least trying to stand up to her, but you know she's too stubborn anyway to uh, listen to that. She's going to do what she wants anyway. Or she's going to think that she's going to do the right thing, and then something happens, and then, it, it, you know, goes completely against her word. Fuck 
did you do to that? I cooked it? You absolutely did not. <laughs> yes, well, they need a roar if left to their own devices. That's awfully cynical. <laughs> yeah, don't be pushing your buttons. Pushing it way too far. For a man who wanted to kill you a day ago. Okay, so this is the fuck tent, the almighty fuck tent. Okay, so she's back in action then, Max. It's like our bodies are all made up of these secret little compartments, she says. What's got pleasures in and inside them? Talk about up the ass, I'm guessing. <laughs> but yeah, you nail G spot or whatever. Bryson would have no choice but to liquidate our holdings here and return me to Boston at failure. Therefore, whatever resentment I might feel towards my daughter and your friend, the captain, I must put aside. Fair enough, I guess, but... Again, he, this guy is smart. He's going to know to play the games, ain't he? So He's going to have his own game, surely. Something to gain from this situation, however bad it's been for him. Give a man a little bit of power. What fuck difference does it make? Double trees, ain't they? Agreed. I'm just gonna leave it. They wanted that other tree for a reason. For the additional tension, the strength of the tree. Who knows? Ah, oh, you fuck faces. But maybe there's something you'd rather not say out loud. Thought when that lackey Gates stepped aside, we might have finally gotten a quartermaster who wasn't fully in the captain's pocket. I guess I was mistaken. That's going to eat away at him, ain't it? I feel like Billy Bones seems to be one of the better guys on the show. I think it's fair to say. He wants to do the right thing. But... Yeah. Billy Bones is a dutiful boatsman who commands enormous respect from his crew as well as from myself. I trust him a thousand times more than I would a Roman by yourself. I told you once, I won't tell you again. I trust Billy. Trying to play me against my own crew will not help your cause. He will, though. That's the thing. Especially if he manages to bring actual evidence. Slok, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder, Mr. Guthrie, if this might have something to do with His Majesty's ship, the Scarborough, currently docked at Harbour Island. Docked outside your home. My intent was to stop there first and unload the slaves in my hold, but when I saw her, I thought better of it. Wait, so they're still, oh, they're still doing slavery here, then, yeah. Well, makes sense, yeah. He did mention that, that uh, what's his name? The guy with the scars. He was originally working as a low level, perhaps a house boy, rent boy. I don't know. <laughs> I was about to say rent boy, but I don't think that's actually what I meant. I knew you wouldn't approve, but I couldn't let him leave here without giving up those guns. With everything we've been through, with everything I've done for you, I'm doing this for us both. But you're lying. She's stuck in this whirlwind, you know, spiraling down. I mean, there's no stopping now, so there's no point trying to prevent it. I don't envy you. You know that you stop at nothing to save this place a place where she matters, a place where you matter. Except that in your heart, you know the truth. You also know right from wrong. But no one else here seems to. I mean, you know that cat's going to get crushed by the ship, right? In order to guarantee Captain Bryce's acquiescence, I put a plan into place without Mr. Scott's knowledge. I lied to him. Betrayed his trust. I didn't want to, but I just didn't think he would understand. Well, you can't expect him to. I mean, you can understand why she lied. 
Yeah, it makes sense. Well, from his perspective as well, he put so much time and energy into this girl and it's just like that, yeah. You understand his upset as well. Get away! Get away! Everyone, get up to the beach now! Come on! Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! No. Don't do it. Do not do it. No, the cat, no, no. He's gonna go back for the cat and he's gonna die. He's dug in, help me. Ah, you fucking cat. <laughs> it's not bloody you. Oh god, it's gonna happen. He's cutting both of the legs off. It's actually hacking away. It's not nice. The longer they wait, the more he's gonna get crushed down anyway. Wait, no way, has he killed the other guy? No, he hasn't, has he? No. Captain Flint, you dodgy bastard. There's no way he just got crushed. You're gonna find he's got a hatchet mark in his face or something. Cleave it to it. That night in the ship. What are they talking about? Well, I didn't hear much, but it sounded like they were talking about a woman. Somebody Barlow. So <laughs> Flint is turning, John is getting his way. He's gonna be the captain of the uh, the ship soon, ain't he? Or at least quartermaster. It's a weird tradition having people help take off your coat. Are you not independent enough as a person to take your own clothing off? Thomas's wife, long rumoured to be the cheating sort, had begun a torrid affair with her husband's closest friend. Wait, wait, wait. As for Thomas's wife, she's said to have fled London along with a lover. Given the facts at hand, I'm forced to assume that the lover is none other than our friend, Captain Flint. Well, so she, she felt bad. She didn't want to forget what she did to her ex, who turned out to be a man who he, she was serially cheating on. So obviously didn't care about anyway. And only started caring, I guess, once he was mentally ill. Did he kill himself? I'm not quite sure if I missed that at all. I mean, either way, so now she's guilty, she feels guilty about it, that she ran away on a flea. I don't know, that's a very scummy. So when I first saw her, I thought she was sweet and innocent, a good person. Obviously not. She is the witch the kid was talking about. So obviously these rumours are spreading quite rapidly around the area then. Well, it's different rumours. This random woman who just showed up out of nowhere. Hello, Charles. Is this the real Eleanor? Or is this his... Visions while on while on opium. From the moment you met me, you must have known I'd never settle for that. It's, it's definitely a hallucination, right? I thought I loved you, and you destroyed me. I exposed you. The weakness behind the mask. Who you really are, yeah. 
yeah, that's, that's definitely a hallucination. He's just trying to convince himself to get that motivation to, uh, to start again. If only you weren't so goddamn afraid. <sighs> Him again. But who is he? Captain Vane obviously knows him. Old Captain, maybe? That would make sense. Some kind of poor relationship with the authority. Father figure, almost. Maybe. He also looks like the the woodsman from The Wolf Among Us. Big, bold, mahusive beard. Okay. The brothel are coming to take their revenge. No way. Oh, what a lucky bastard. Because there's no way he dies now. He's got too much of a story to work towards. Wait! Oh, now you want to play coy. Now you want to play coy, eh? Oh, a bunch of cunts. Little rat. I'll cut you in for half. We'll be partners. You want to do business out of fear. You've already proven yourself to be a worm. Why would he want to be part of you? Just crush his neck. Vile. Okay, so I think we have two big takeaways from this episode. Two major points of this narrative. We've got the development between... John Silver and Captain Flint and then we've got the development between Eleanor and her father. At the beginning of the episode we heard John Silver tell Captain Flint about seeing really up to no good, listening to rumours with people who probably shouldn't be if he wants to stay on the good side of the captain. Obviously the captain didn't believe him or, I guess, yeah, I didn't believe him. He knows Billy. The crew knows Billy. He trusts Billy. Whereas John is a rat. You know, we like him, but he's a rat. Especially in the eyes of Flint. As the episode progressed, he saw that John was putting in the effort, trying to learn how to cook properly, listening to instructions. When the boat was falling, John came over and gave him a, a solution, a real solution with the cleaver. Who I, I'm still I'm, I'm convinced he took out the other guy, right? There's no way he just, he just accidentally got trapped in there himself. We saw the footage of Captain Flynn absolutely hacking away, but we didn't see what he was hacking at. So what I saw uh, Randall, it was just his foot that was caught, right? His foot was anything that got cut off. I feel like a cleaver like that would chop through a foot very quickly. Especially with the way he was hacking down. I feel like that would slice through in one or two hits. And imagine an old guy like that, your bones are probably brittle anyway. It's probably not going to be that strong where he's cutting. But that's beside the point. After that, he saw... Billy and the quartermaster, Gates, discussing and consoling each other, almost. I don't know if he ever heard that, or he understood that they were, it was no good. He, he, he can't handle the truth that he's been told. He obviously came back to John, and I think they're going to have a budding friendship soon but I don't know how he's going to handle Billy he's going to have to test him a bit because you know he has earned his trust yeah he listened to the guy listened to what he had to say but 
he hasn't done anything wrong yet. But it, it, it only benefits John. Not just John, work his way up to become quartermaster. Or you know, the, the right hand man or captain. There's no way Flint's going to allow that to happen straight away, but it's definitely going to bolster his position on the ship. That's true, it's not going to hurt him. Then we also have the back and forth between Eleanor and her father. Eleanor obviously betrayed her loyal. I, can't, I still can't remember his name. Is it here on the x ray? Mr. Scott, that's what he's named, okay. Yeah, so Eleanor betrayed Mr. Scott's trust by going against her word, going behind his back after all these years and everything he's done for her. When we, with that said, I feel like they're both in the right when it comes to the situation. In her perspective, this $5 million treasure galleon has to be taken down. This is the, the key to the island's success, right? So she's going to do anything in her power to make sure that goes through. Whereas this guy, he actually wants the safety of the island, the safety of Eleanor, and for the safety of himself. And he thought it was a bad idea to hold him hostage or potentially kill him for not following along. So it's understandable then how he's completely given up on Eleanor. He's now working with the father who I guess he was originally working with before he went and helped Eleanor with the island. You know, he was the houseboy of the father. So it seems that the when the dad was left alone with the ship owner. So, yeah, okay, is it Captain O'Malley? By the looks of it. Yeah, so when those two were left alone, they obviously made a plan of fixing this up. There's no way that guy was going to give away his guns for no reason. And as we see right here, that they aren't planning on taking the guns. Looks like they took one load of them. So a few guns, but not all of them. Question is, how is Eleanor going to react to this? We now know Captain Flint. I should wait a minute. Was that Eleanor in the background there? When Captain Flint said, we're going to have to go take them. Was Eleanor there? I feel like there might have been a blonde woman behind him. Someone was blonde behind him. So I guess that sets up for the next episode. Next episode, they're going to have to try and take those guns by force. They're going to have to no choice. They need those guns. They're going to take them. But that's just that's a bad look for everyone. No one is going to be on Eleanor's side at that point. They allowed that to happen in their waters. That's just, that's not going to go well. And it seems the dad is playing games when it comes to. Captain Flint's wife or fling, whatever. Bringing all of that old information up with her. And then bringing the priest into it as well. He's going to be repenting for his sins of allowing all of this darkness to happen on his island. I guess that brings up another question. Is he actually going to repent and try and remove this shadiness? That's making him a lot of money. Or is he, again, using her as bait to try and get leverage on Captain Flint? You've got Eleanor and Captain Flint playing this one game, and this guy, Mr. Goffrey, is playing this major arc around him. Maybe he can get in the money for himself, who knows. But anyway, yeah, I, I did enjoy it, I enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section what you thought about this episode. And yeah, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Peace.